Chapter 31 Raylene Brenner It's a bit weird seeing so many lights on, in so many places. Of course we had the generators before, but we used those sparingly, we had bigger priorities than to light up every room in every building. We tried not using it for lights at all. The sun is coming down. It's still quite early, about late supper time. Yet each day's daylight is growing. And soon, the sun will reach into the later evening. I can't wait for summer. It feels like this has been the longest winter on record, or at least since I've been alive. We get inside, and hear the bustle of people in the lounge. Dishes are clinking. People are talking and laughing. My stomach is still stuffed from the feast, and the soup medley that's likely for supper churns my stomach at the thought. No one says anything, and I don't ask to stop for supper. We go up the stairs and into Dominique's room. It's oddly warm in here. The white square heater, radiator, under the window is rumbling loudly. How could anyone sleep with that going? Outside the window, I see more lights than ever on at the hospital. The first two floors are almost completely lit up. Dominique and John set to work gathering what they want to. They don't have much for personal items, but they have collected a few things along the way. I take a backpack and quickly pack the handful of things that I have in here. Clothing, hygiene stuff and my stuffy fit loosely in the bag. A knock sounds at the open door. I jump around to look at who is there. Power works now, Miles says as he flips on the lights. The light blinds me for a moment. I close my eyes to avoid the pain and brightness. Thanks. I think we just got used to nothing working. Dominique says. How was your trip? He asks. We weren't expecting you back for a few days. I open my eyes a crack and find that the light isn't too bright anymore. Miles has moved closer into the room. He leans against the end of the hall with his arms crossed. There was a bit of an emergency, so we had to come back early. Jaden stayed so she can get us vegetable seeds and tree saplings. She'll be back in a few days. John explains. His smile drops. Oh, what happened? Dominique shakes her head. Honestly, nothing much. It was blown out of proportion and solved before we had even gotten back. But James left in a hurry, I say. There must still be something happening if James had to leave. Miles looks from me to ask the adults. James left? Yeah, we were on our way over here and saw James was packing up a car. Said he had something to do and would be back in a few days. Dominique reassures Miles. Where are you going? Miles asks. Just to the farm, John tells him. He explains further, James unilaterally decided to move all Jaden's things over there, so we're going to live with her. Sounds like an upgrade. Miles uncrosses his arms and drops them. He places each hand into his pants pockets. It's getting pretty empty in here, we're not going to have any neighbors left. There's plenty of people who can move in. James is doing a huge campaign to get everyone to move here. So it won't be empty for long. Dominique tells him. Or maybe you might want to move into a house. Maybe. I'll put the vacancy on the board and talk to Ted about it at the same time. Miles offers. Thanks. She says. Miles smiles and pats the doorframe on the way out. Can I bring my things Alexa's things? I correct myself immediately. Of course sweetie, Dominique says. My smile grows and I run out of the room and to our room. It takes a moment to locate the light switch, I hadn't paid attention to it before. I flip on the light to be able to see fully. The room is colder, somehow. More so, the further from the hall I get. It almost feels like how outside would feel. The heater isn't running in here, or at least it's not making noise. We didn't leave much. Dominique and I collected everything I would use earlier, and had moved it to her room. But I want to collect my Alexa's things, and take them with us too. She didn't unpack much, and Alexa didn't have much more than I did. It won't take me long. I check the all the drawers and under and around things, to make sure I don't leave anything behind. Some of her clothes might fit me in a couple years. I check the bathroom and take the hygiene supplies from in there. 
A voice escalates from behind the wall, then another. It sounds like two people are having an argument. Curious, I walk over to the wall. Placing down the things in my hands, I turn and press my ear against the wall I share with Kelly and Miles. The murmurs turn a bit clearer. He's abandoning us again. Jaden left so he leaves. He'll be back. Do we even want him to? He's been playing us from the beginning. Now that they both said something, I determine this muffled voice sounds more like it belongs to Kelly. He has his reasons. The other voice must be Miles. I'm starting to think we'd be better off joining Sandra, at least she's going to be honest with using us, Kelly says. I gasp. I pull my ear away from the wall as the argument continues. I look at the wall, almost as though if I looked hard enough, I might be able to peer through. Kelly is going to join Sandra. I have to tell Dominique. Maybe she can stop Kelly from running away. She can't join Sandra. She could get hurt. Sandra's mean.